Oh, boxed sets, we love you so well, especially starter sets. So I have three starter sets that I haven't really opened, and I'm going to open them for you. And then I have an unboxing because I haven't done that for a while. I do have a couple unboxings. Man, I have these boxes I've had for a while of Kickstarters that I've received. I said a while three times now, and I need to open those, but I feel like I want to do those justice and open them kind of on a YouTube so I will not plague you, good listener of the podcast, with those. The first box set I'm opening is the Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game. It's a beginner game, introduction for role-playing for three to five players. Legend of the Five Rings. So that is, you know, uh, here's the back. Gather your friends, ready your katana, and prepare to become a samurai in the Emerald Empire of Rokugan. Whether you're brand new to role-playing or just new to The Legend of the Five Rings, a beginner game is a perfect starting point for players of all skill levels. Open the box and begin playing immediately. The Legend of the Five Rings beginner games features a complete team, sorry, a complete learn-as-you-go adventure. Players can jump right in and play as they learn the game using pre-generated character folios that keep the rules right at their fingertips. Custom dice, an exciting gameplay system, use of the Genesis system, Makes every role a dramatic event. Detailed roles provide for hours of entertainment as you create your own adventures and tell your own stories. It's a complete standalone game, actually. So I guess that's kind of cool. I have to see if this is true, that you can do your own thing. But let's open it up. So I do recall that these Edge games, they have effectively, like, you open it from the bottom or top. I guess you could open it from the top. But I really have never liked the boxes because they're kind of flimsy. And I know that... Huh, Previous ones have fallen apart. Uh, the one I had, I had the beginner game. I've had the beginner game from Edge Games, formerly Fantasy Flight Games, and Star Wars stuff. And the uh, Edge of the Empire one and the Rebellion one fell apart. But they have the dice, the sort of 12 sided dice with the different symbols, and then six sided dice uh, with different symbols as well. I really don't know how to interpret the symbols yet for this game. Very nice map as we're looking at it. A map of Rogukan. Uh, it's a double, it's a two-sided map. So on one side is a map of Rogukan, and on the other side of the map are the Castle of the Emerald Champion and Suma. So I guess a city and a huge castle that you uh, adventure in. They do have like a sheet of character pogs, which are kind of cool, double-sided, um, which is kind of nice. So for the characters probably in the game, which is neat. My cat Jewel is helping me out and probably trying to destroy everything. No, I'm just kidding. It says, read this first. Like a little pamphlet. Uh, what is a role-playing game? Who are the players? An example of play. And welcome to the Emerald Empire. I think, is it a... Unfold? Yeah, it's, a, it's like a pamphlet. So one, two, three, four page pamphlet. So, you know, inside the front and back and then the inside and then how to use the maps and tokens and then welcome to the emerald empire and what's going on which is kind of cool um so the story so far etc etc the intro the adventure next we have the ad adventure book it says read this second so you read this second the adventure book has an adventure that scales um 29 uh, pages 30 pages no, 34 pages, and then the last... Oh, there's a free downloadable adventure, which I probably need to check out in the Palace of the Emerald Champion. So, free downloadable... How do we do that? Um, i got to find the free downloadable adventure now. It's kind of cool. I know that um, they did that with the Rebels game. I can't remember if they did that with the Edge of Empire beginner, but uh, they all seem to have... Uh, how do we get to that? Yep, so in the Palace of the Emerald Champion <coughs> with on edgestudio.net, apparently. So, pretty cool. So, And then I think that one will probably help you to continue the mini campaign from there. So, next we have, uh, there's a Shikenja of the Phoenix Clan, a Bushi of the Lion Clan, a Tattooed Monk of the Dragon Clan, Courtier of the Crane Clan. So, those are the one, two, three... 
four characters, so four characters, it says three to five. Maybe there are other characters that you can find online, possibly. I'll have to look. Uh, maybe let me look at the, what that says. Maybe it says that in the adventure book. In the adventure book. So um, maybe here a player will begin. Two, it says two to four players in here, but it says three to five on the. Okay. Um, what to find? Support rules. Cool. All right, I have to read through that. But the folios are very nice. The folios are like four pages, but four pages or more. Oh wow, they're pretty substantial. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven pages of, so they have, um, yeah, they have a character sheet, like two character sheets, but I don't know if they, oh, if, when you get experience points, they have like an advanced state and a the starting, starting level and advanced level, which is kind of nice. Um, so then the rule book is a mini rule book. It comes in at around about 40, 48 pages with a short index, and it has how to play the game, how to interpret all the dice, descriptors, uh, for all the equipment and stuff. Um, what else? A section on equipment, how to resolve actions, in and how to resolve intrigue, harm, and healing, uh, and then non-player characters, which is cool. I guess it's for the adventure, just in general, non-player characters. And then supernatural creatures as well, which is kind of cool. So it's a short, it's a small book. All right, well, that's that's pretty cool. It's a nice beginner game. It'd be fun to get this to the table. So the next game I have also by Edge Studios is the Force and Destiny beginner game. It's a very similar format and box to the uh, Legend of the Five Rings. It has you know how to it has a stuff including pogs and a set of dice which is great so it's always great to get a set of dice because apparently these dice are pretty expensive it's cheaper to actually get one of these beginner sets than the actual dice alone it comes with um yeah it comes with the a good set of of dice for your your game including a force dice uh so two of the yellows one of the red three of the greens um two blues two blacks and three of the purples and they do various things um so the green and purple are uh, attribute and difficulty the the blue and black are fortune and misfortune the red is the sort of uh imp the dice with the imp imperial symbol on it and the those are like your skills dice and your uh, your extreme, your challenge dice, I guess, and then the force dice, which is kind of nice. If they have that. So then there's like all oh, a read at me first with the scrolling, and it's a force and destiny game. So it gives you these characters. It's very sim very similar format. Set of pogs, a double sided map that has the temple on one side, the valley, um, and the ruin and the bridge so several encounter sites which is kind of cool i've used this kind of things before a good set of pogs so the probably the player characters and the adversaries that they face um which is kind of neat and then uh, two booklets and the character folios so in force and destiny you play force characters so they have a sentinel a guardian a seeker and a mystic all uh Force sensitive, so I don't know if they're quite. I, I can't remember really if they're quite Jedi yet, and honestly, I um, maybe they have like what? Let me see if the what they have what's going on in the galaxy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's just like pretty much um, the Jedi Order has been destroyed, and now you're the remnants of the the Jedi, probably um, much like Kanan Jarrus from Rebels. Uh, you were all Padawans and somehow escaped or were young and somehow escaped the uh, Order 66. So, so yeah, the Jedi, so it's a dark time in the galaxy. The Jedi Order has been destroyed and the knowledge of the Force is all but lost. Only a handful of people sensitive to the Force remain, scattered across the stars, ignorant of their destiny. So it is like Force and Destiny. It is 
after during the uh, rebellion time after the emperor has taken over with an adventure book um, again the adventure clocks in around 30 pages and there is at the back yes a free bonus adventure as well at edgestudio.net so that'd be something to check out so it's kind of like two adventures for the price of one um, which is nice for these box sets and then the rule book and how narrative play works, interpreting the pools, investing XP and how that works, and then the general rules with all the gear, equipment, talents, etc. The force and how, how, it, how you can use it, different force powers, so like a, almost a spell book, and then adversaries that you will run upon. So not, it's a really a good little thing. It'd be fun to do. We've done, uh, we did a long campaign of Edge of the Empire that I've done before. And I've done a, uh, we currently are doing a Rebels campaign that is uh, in between, you know, season one and two. So we're taking a little break from it. Uh, we had a really neat conclusion um, on um, Onderon and what the players did on Onderon, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, they stopped the machinations of a moth. And uh, I think during the break, I'll fast forward the timeline through the Battle of Scarif, through the Battle of Yavin, and then we'll pick up uh, during the actual Rebellion time. So this is kind of a prelude, Season 1, and then we'll jump into it. So that is the Force and Destiny box. Right, so I guess this is not just opening the boxes, right? It's the kind of highlighting the value of the starter set boxes. And the last one, I actually need to grab out my box cutter, if I can find it. Find it. And Amy's back, by the way. What happened to my box cutter? It's somewhere in here. I had to move things around in my in here, but I can't find it, unfortunately. Which is not good. It's a really good box cutter. Um so I'll try to open this without the box cutter. So this last box set is the Wrath and Glory box set. So Wrath and Glory is a game that takes place in the universe of Warhammer 40k. It is also is done by Cubicle 7, which also is doing the Imperium Maledictum and does Warhammer Fantasy. Okay, so the starter set here, the Wrath and Glory one, it's, this is a more solid box, and I kind of like Cubicle 7, and actually for that matter, Chaosium does some really good starter sets. All right, so they have a set of dice. I guess I collect these dice. These are, there's a red dice. I guess it's a wrath dice. And then there's uh, seven, seven black dice in here. Those are probably your, those things that you, it says read this first. This always a read this first, it looks like. It's a lot of little pamphletsy things. Read this first. And this is just an overview of what's in the box. So um, there's a adventure. There's a guide to the flotilla. There's six character sheets. Who are the agents? What is the system? How do I play? Um, and all that kind of stuff. So that's so just a small pamphlet type of thing uh, that Cubicle 7 does really well. There are little folios for the characters. There is Som Somnus, a sanctioned psyker, Sister Honoria, a sister of battle, a rogue trader, Lachlan Teague, Treve, Malcon. The 22nd is a Skitarius. Um, so it looks like Adaptus Mechanicus here. Yep. And then, uh, ooh, an Eldari Ranger. So, um, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's an Eldar Ranger. And a Space Marine Scout. That's a pretty cool group. I do like Wrath and Glory because it's really able to blend all the different types of characters that you could play in the 40k universe from Space Marines to Sisters of Battle to Psychers to Mechanicus and even, you know, Eldar and other non-chaos creatures. So Traitor's Hymn is the adventure book. This adventure, and it's, you know, again, a step-by-step. -step. The adventure clocks in at 48 pages, so a substantial adventure. Um, here it's called the Traitor's Hymn. And let's see if there's a follow-on. Because, like, you know, like the beginner boxes for the other... The other two, um, yeah, there's an aftermath, what happened, crew of the Herald. Oh, okay, that's cool, you're on a ship. Um, the different threats at the end. But it's a pretty substantial adventure. 
Uh, but it doesn't look like there's an extra follow-on, but there's plenty. I'm sure you could look for Wrath and Glory Adventures. There might even be some free ones or very inexpensive ones. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Baldari. A lot, of, lot done on introducing all the characters together and then what happens. Um, combat is in the middle of here. So it is definitely step by step as it goes through the adventure, which is kind of nice. And it explains things that come up in the adventure as the adventure goes. So uh, it has some, some tokens. Uh, I guess they're death tokens or different tokens. Imperial token, chaos tokens. Uh, not like pogs like normal. And then there's some more stuff. Oh, there's a Gilead system map on the, in the box, which is kind of cool. Um, there's some, uh, what are these? Cardboard things that show how to make a fear test, the wrath dice, fear test, making a test, test in detail, and then actions in combat, which is very helpful, honestly. There's a little uh, cardboard, 8x10, of the Gilead system. And then there's a setting book, which is a Veronius flotilla. And I guess it is... Um, what is the Veronius flotilla? I guess it's, uh, it tells about the fleet politics, uh, the history of the Gilead system, the ships of the fleet, and the different ports of call. Oh, and there's other, well, there's other little adventures. They're not like full out adventures, but they're, um, they are like tier two adventures. Okay. Two, three, four. They're little like two page adventures. Five, six. There's six like little two page adventures and then the last page of the advertisement. And they do have like a Forsaken Player's Guide, Litanies of the Lost, a rule book for the Wrath and Glory line, which is, again, it's a different line than Imperium Maledictum. Imperium Maledictum is going to be a traditional, a two, a, you know, D100 system. So this is different. And this looks pretty exciting. I really, we've been talking about wanting to get into Wrath and Glory, and I think this would be a great way to start our mini campaign for Wrath and Glory. All right, those are the box sets, and I got one more thing that I've been waiting for for some time. And again, I think the value of the starter sets, and I have like the I have other starter sets. Say, for example, like the Dune starter set and um, Fallout starter set, which we played through, and the like. So I, I played through these starter sets, and I think they do have reuse value. So um, so definitely, I think worth checking out your start Tales of the Loop starter set we did as well. So. And sometimes they'll have them on, on Roll20, so you can play them online. Um, but they are definitely have a lot of... Oh, Alien Starter Set. I've done that, uh, gone through that as well. So, so I think there's definitely value in using a starter set if you just want to really test out a game. I guess that's the idea. I have the Pendragon Starter Set, and I haven't done it yet. I know Arlen Walker of Live from Pelham's Wasteland and I were talking about trying to run through that one or do that one. I try to push that onto my players as a backup game. I guess I did, I sort of did the Walking Dead starter set, but I made it my own and modified that one. But that one, see, I can reuse because I can just use the adventure in there because I really haven't used it. So anyway, um, yeah, let's get to this other unboxing. And this one will be more formal as we open our 24 centimeter, nine and a half inch by 13 inch or 34 centimeter, 13 and a quarter really, 34 centimeter um, package. It is just a, like a em double envelope, kind of cardboard double envelope, about two and an eighth inches thick, so between five and six centimeters. And it does have, it is from Lightning Source um, for drive through. So, what did I get from drive through? So I'll open it, got that perforated thing, and I see how these things turned out. Um, these are from a Kickstarter, and the Kickstarter is a little weird. I don't want to, I mean, financial troubles are financial troubles, and we never know, you know, the, the cost and all this stuff. I don't run a company, but Dragon Turtle came, Games did a Kickstarter for their Terminal Overdrive uh, mission book, and unfortunately, well, I haven't gotten the print on demand because initially it's supposed to be for the hardcover but then they're like, well, we, we had a cost overrun and they, you know, we have to print on demand these. And so it's an extra charge for, for shipping. 
for these things. I kind of put it off, put it off, but I finally got them. And now I have the Carbon 2185 physical copy. I've had the PDS for a long time. Carbon 2185, a cyberpunk RPG. Um, and it's kind of, it's a 5e based cyberpunk game. And I've run a few things uh, with my players. Oh, it does have the, it's nice. It does have an adventure in the back. Uh, yes, the first level adventure that we did run and that they put together as like a five adventure mini campaign now, the Child's Request and the like. So we ran Child's Request part one and two, it looks like. Uh, so there's three more parts that'd be fun to do. But so like I said, it's a 5e game. It goes to level 10. You know how to play, how you do it. You have different origins like Badlander, Gutter Punk, Corporate Kid, a regular Joe, a synth, a wormer, um, and then you have classes, a daimyo, so like your uh, Street Sam, a doc, um, enforcer, hacker, investigator, scoundrel, um, etc. And then you have backgrounds, backgrounds, various backgrounds, which are kind of neat, and what they do, and then um, yeah, I thought it was pretty fun to do, and as, since my players are familiar, the home group are familiar with um, uh, D&D 5e, it's pretty easy in, um, be before I get them into other cyberpunk games like 2020 or Red. Well, we've tried Shadowrun, but they we kind of, I don't know if we bounced off of it because we played during COVID, and we just kind of got, some of the players don't really enjoy the, mm, the binding is not so great on the terminal overdrive. The binding on the main book seems pretty solid, but this one on Terminal Overdrive, which is the adventure book. Uh, but the ad adventure is a pretty thick adventure. So it is, it clocks in at 140 pages. Um, again, it, it is sort of, I mean, it's not dense writing like the old school gaming. It's like the, the bigger font 5e type of stuff. So, you know, your probably reward per page count isn't as, as big. But, um, I mean, maybe they, I wonder if, because they got known to cost over because of the art, because there's some nice two-page spread art here uh, that looks pretty good. So, yeah, it's a lot of maps. Um, it has how many chapters does Terminal Overdrive have? Um, I don't know, but it has like a part one and a part two. And I guess you got to, what is Terminal Overdrive? Let's see, what does it say? It's a campaign itself. The adventure which takes your cyberpunk face to face with the Enigma Collective and then right into the sphere to face off against the powerful AI. So pretty cool. Uh, I don't know who the Enigma Collective are. Probably some sort of gang. Um, there's some art. Part one. How many parts do it have? Part one into the Enigma Collective and part two, the sculptures awaken. Um, so and there's a lot of like info as you go. So there's a whole section on San Francisco and what that, that's about. So it looks pretty good. Uh, a lot looks like some ad, an adversary bestiary section, um, which looks pretty cool. So yeah, that's Terminal Overdrive. That's Carbon 2185. So I think we might get this as a next game in with my home group.